it really de demystifies, I think, what is commonly uh, accepted lore of what happened in, o in 07, 08, which was treasuries went up because of a flight to quality. Investors dumped everything and went into treasuries. What you're saying sounds to me like the bid up in treasuries that made them rally so aggressively in at the end of 08 was the fact that the actual institutions that run the show, right, right the plum, the, the system was running after collateral and they were chasing all these different durations of treasuries in order to to secure their balance sheet and, and to keep them from, from having a, a run on their credit. Yeah, the simplest way to think about it is this. Put yourself in the shoes of a repo counterparty. I have cash on my balance sheet from wherever. I could be a money market fund. It could be any, it doesn't matter. I have cash on my balance sheet. All I care about is that tomorrow morning, Whoever I lend that cash to, they're going to post collateral to me. I need to be able, if they default on that loan, I need to be able to sell that collateral and get back every single penny that I lent. So your only consideration is what is the market for that collateral going to look like tomorrow? If that market is kind of shaky, then I'm not really sure that I can sell your asset and get back all my money. And so what is the biggest, deepest, most sophisticated market in the world? It's U.S. Treasuries. It's nothing to do with the credit worthiness of the U.S. government. It's simply the fact that the U.S. Treasury market is the deepest, most liquid and most dependably liquid and therefore predictable market in the world. So you're the repo counterparty. You're, you're lending cash. You're not really sure about crap collateral. You're going to demand U.S. Treasuries, not because you like the U.S. government, but because you know that you can sell it tomorrow. And with all these other markets for crap collateral going wrong, it, it just narrows the list of acceptable usable collateral down to the to the just U.S. treasuries. It sort of herds the entire global marketplace into that narrow and narrower and narrower space. It's driving so treasuries into mentioned... negative yield even. Yes, T-bills will get negative because uh, as Emil and I talk about all the time currently, it, it's still the problem. We still have a collateral scarcity problem is that you have to look at U.S. Treasuries, T-bills in particular, not as investments. It's not about the interest rates. They're balance sheet tools. They have a utility in these currency and funding markets that goes well beyond investment characteristics. So banks will own them at an extreme negative carry because they need to pay the premium, the liquidity premium, to own collateral that's usable in all weather. 